we're done with House of the Dragon. I I, I thought they stuck the landing, man. So we're talking yeah. about episodes uh, nine and nine, ten, ten, right? Yeah. yeah, nine and ten. Um, it was basically the Greens' reaction to the king dying, and um, the Blacks' reaction to the king dying. Right. And um, yeah, I, I thought episode nine was probably the weakest of all of them. The one immediately after episode eight, I think it should win awards. I think that was amazing. It's the um, one about him, him bringing his family together before he dies, basically. Yeah. And trying desperately Pat, to prevent the thing that happens anyhow. Yeah. And Patty Constantine should win an award for that role in yep. the just world. He won't maybe. Cause you know, like I, I th- <laughs> It's it's like uh, Better Call Saul didn't win an Emmy this year, you know. Right. The the ones who deserve it don't usually get it, but I think he if if there was a Just World, he would get an award. That episode would get something. Um, I think that was perfect. The, the way they built up that he had, you know, you were compelled and riveted by him walking across the room. Episode nine, I thought was like, it was okay. It was um a little disjointed, and it may be because I don't really like. The, the the greens in general like they're not very compelling characters to me and there was no uh daemon targaryen so as if there's no daemon there's no viserys it's like <laughs> what am i doing yeah and i, I kind of like that episode I, I mean i i it was very plotty it was very yeah. like let's get where we need to go but I, i'm i'm okay with like if you have 10 episodes if one episode is dedicated to just getting the pieces on the board yeah where they need to be so that everything can happen that's okay you yeah know? ultimately i'm fine with it because it ended so well and it was so sure of itself compared to she hulk <laughs> yeah it's just compared to she hulk it's it's a masterpiece <laughs> um yeah and there's like some <laughs> there's just some like weird game of thronesy stuff in the ninth one like the stuff i hated about game of thrones like I don't know, like a uh, L- Laris, like having a f- fetish for some reason. And, <laughs> mm. um, and that there's like that one, um, it wasn't in the books at the end of episode nine where, uh, Rainice, the princess Rainice, like busts through the, the floor with her dragon and like stares down. Uh, not my favorite part of the series. Yeah, it was kind of like a girl boss moment. And she yeah. could have like ended the war right there by killing everybody with her dragon, but she Why didn't. The hell didn't she? Yeah. And it, and it was totally fabricated. It wasn't in the source material. Not that everything has to be in the source material, but it was one of the first changes that I thought was weaker. It didn't like add to the story. Right. And it felt just fabricated for a moment. Like they weren't very sure of their story. Yes. But, Luckily, I think the the tenth episode is just was fantastic. It was a, it was a very was like probably the top three in in the the whole season, where you have, uh, I like Renera is what I like about it is like Renera is like trying to, like um, she doesn't want to like you be she was trying to channel her father in a way where she's like oh well, can we do this in a way that we don't like create a bunch of war we don't rule over a kingdom of ashes and she's trying to be while well, damon's like he's already at war you know he's already there that one line there's a line that stuck with me she, with, <clears throat> she's like about to go into labor and they're like where's damon she goes taken to madness <laughs> waging his war you know like like i don't know I, I i can't deal with damon right now but he's probably fucking acting in a way that is not going to be helpful to us <laughs> yeah and, and and just like their their diamond dynamic is really good and, you know matt smith is just the is is awesome yeah um you know the the you know then she gets crowned queen it's just like there's so many great moments and then and of course the ending with and of course you know what they do is when they you know her her son luke they do that kind of McBain thing, like the McBain and the Simpsons, where it's like <laughs> they they really focus on Luke. It's like I'm two days away from retirement, and <laughs> it's like here's my boat, L- live forever, whatever. <laughs> of course, they let you know they they set the foundation for all that stuff. Yeah. many you know several episodes prior. So, and you know even um, uh, one eye there, the son with the one Amond. eye, Amon, yeah, Amon, yeah, like. As cruel as that kid is, he knew the boundaries on this one and he decided to walk right up to the boundary thinking that he wouldn't go over the boundary. And one un- unpredictable moment later, and he has deep regret about like, fuck, I just started a civil war with my yeah. family. Yeah, and I love I love that the, the pieces on the chessboard are like, you know, Viserys has like total claim. 
Absolutely. But the other side also, like, their manipulation is very easy for them. Because, like, the masses will buy into their story pretty easily because it's so unusual for a daughter to... to yeah. Yeah, and they and they crowned him in front of all the ki- uh, in front right. of all the people, and the, they they saw him as their king. And people, even like they 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 built it up in before. Remember when they had they uh, Rhaenyras was out, Rhaenyra was out in the the small folk, and they were like, "Oh, it's so weird that there's going to be a queen, and there's a they are there when there's already a son." So the small folk in the towns expect there to be a king, right? And so. Um, so it's, and they're it's, given one. Yeah. yeah, and so they have one now. And so uh but Renera has the the rightful claim uh, or so she thinks. And so and but she also, you know, wants to take her father's advice and be like, "Well, we don't want to we don't want to cause a, a, a like what is rule if I if I take it and then destroy everything. That's not really what a ruler does." And so there's a lot of interesting concepts there. And then of course Aemond with his, you know, and Aemond also, he was he was terrorized by uh, Luke in his childhood, so he thinks he's justified to terrorize him, and then he <laughs> fucks it up, and it's a Franz Ferdinand moment where they yeah, start exactly. a war. <clears throat> I love it, and you know what? It could end. It could that could they could cancel the show right now, and I'd be like, that was great. That was a really yeah. cool movie. That's what it felt like. It felt like this like whole season was i i felt like they closed a chapter of a book like you know when you're reading a history yeah. a really good history book and you read the you read a chapter about the lead up to a war and they end it and you're like oh that's the lead up to the war that's it that's the end of that chapter yeah. and now we're going into the next chapter it felt very confident it felt very um yeah intentional and it felt like a complete arc of a story and that was the right place to end it like it'll be great to continue from here because our characters are are in a fascinating spot <clears throat> but it also like the season ended and it wasn't like oh well, that's such bullshit i want to watch the next one you know you're like cool that's like i get you know you told a three-act structure ultimately across this whole season that really yeah and, and generally speaking uh, uh, you know they they laid all the foundation at the right time paid it off correctly they had a lot of characters to contend with they had a lot of plot to contend with yeah and they didn't lose the story in it and uh yeah I'm and, and that, yeah and people were complaining it's like oh it doesn't have the scope of game of thrones it doesn't have the it's like i don't want that <laughs> like this is a different story i like that it was more of like you know the tutors you know it's it's more of like hey we have this one royal family that we're following and this is the lead up to this war and then maybe you know in the civil war breaks out then you can maybe expand it a bit but i i like the, the way they i it's it was it set itself apart from the previous series but it also um you know it, it did its own thing and it it, it, it does feel game of thrones because they you know they have all the houses they they reference the Baratheons and the Starks. Starks and the Tullys, but, and of course the Targaryens, but it's its own, it's its own thing. It, 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 it did it very confidently. I like it. <laughs> yeah. For for me, the small scope is a feature, not a bug. Like yeah. I, I really, I, I thought we were spread a little too thin at times with game of Thrones and, you know, like a season goes by and you forget all about these ice zombies and you're like, all oh, right, isn't the, and then, like, you finally get to the ice zombies, they just kill them real quick. <laughs> like, uh, I'm, gl- yeah. I'm glad I spent a decade waiting for that. Yeah, you know? where that yeah, was the thing is, like, a lot of those set pieces didn't really end up end up meaning anything, right? And every time they did like any sort of action in this, it it, it, it furthered the story in some way, or told something about the characters. I loved it. I loved it. I, I I'll, I'll I'll very excitedly watch the next season. Words I never, ever thought I would say about more Game of Thrones. <laughs> Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.